that you were down Is every time you turned your life around Baptist Church Santa Monica broadcast. We're so happy to have you here. My name is Edgar Blackman and this is my wife, Kelly. Calvary is a church committed to sharing the loving gospel of Christ and serving a global community with compassion. Our pastor is Mac Mosett and we know that he would love to be your pastor as well. He loves God's people. He's a fantastic leader and a loving friend and we know that he's so excited to have you here today. So, on behalf of all members of Calvary Baptist Church and our pastor, please enjoy the broadcast. Good morning and welcome to Calvary. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church, Santa Monica. Hello and welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church, Santa Monica, California. Welcome. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Good morning and welcome to Calvary. I'm Pastor Lemuel Mac Mosette III of the Calvary Baptist Church right here in Santa Monica, California. I'm coming to you from inside this historic sanctuary which has served this community for over 100 years. I want you to know that you are welcome and we are glad that you are here. Listen. As you are a part of us, please remember that Calvary is one faith, one family, one love, one Calvary. Please enjoy the broadcast and be blessed. We greet you this morning in the beauty of God's most holy and glorious creation. 
to bring to you a call to worship, to remind us of God's expectation that comes from Romans chapter 12, verses one and two, which reminds us where Paul said to the church at Rome, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And in verse two, he says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God's word for God's people, thanks be to God. As we remember the extraordinary number of those who are suffering, albeit from the effects of COVID-19 and other illnesses, as we elevate our country and the hearts of every person who resides in it. We're reminded that the world is watching and that there is a great cloud of witnesses watching those who profess to be Christian people or followers of our Christ. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. God, we recognize first your power, your promise, your provision your power as you are all knowing, all present. You see, you hear, you activate, you actuate on every call of your people. And so right now we call on your power to deliver those who are suffering, to deliver the challenges in our country, to reach inside to the hearts of the people who you have so graciously and gloriously made, gloriously made to honor and serve you. Thank you, O oh God, for being who you are in our lives. Thank you for delivering us from evil. Thank you for everything that you continue to do as a loving God who cares for his creation, his people. We call upon you for your promise, O Lord. We know that you have promised in your word to be with us and to never forsake us. And so as we walk through the incredible challenge of this very day, we call on your promise to be with us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, to strengthen us, to give us peace, to fortify us and make us the people that you have called us to be. And oh God, we call on your provision. Many are suffering due to lack. The economy has fallen out in their homes, in their jobs, in their communities. And we ask, oh God, that you would instill in every brother, every sister, every neighbor to help and be the arms of provision and sharing and generosity that you have created. Oh God, our list is long of those who are calling on your name for whatever it is that they need. And we realize that you have instilled in us this zeal to serve you by serving people. So help us, oh God, as we are the eyes that see, the ears that hear, the hands that caress and embrace, the feet that walk to need and serve you by serving one another. We thank you right now because we know that you said in your word that weeping may endure for a night, but that joy comes in the morning. And so we are calling and claiming right now that joy that is in you. You also said in your word that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so we are fortifying ourselves by our faith, by our belief, by our trust in your powerful hand to do the things that you have said in your word that you would do. Thank you for the examples that you have set before us to give us guidance, to show us that our trust and love for you is the thing that will deliver us from this 
present challenge. We thank you right now. We ask your blessing upon the Calvary family, every member, every friend, every associate, every viewer right now who stands in agreement, who stands in agreement. We thank you right now for those who reach out beyond themselves, who touch beyond themselves, who have elevated and embraced those who are not connected by familial associations, but by friendship, or even those whom we encounter in our daily businesses, in our work, in our schools, in our marketplaces, on the streets. Give us what we need to lead with compassion, lead with mercy and not judgment. We thank you right now for your son Jesus Christ who gave his life to reconnect us with you. He said that he came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. And so we thank you right now because we know that you have not come to constrain, you have not come to squash, but you have come to open us to the beauty of who you are so that our lives are enriched, so that we can enrich the lives of others. And we thank you right now. Be with us as we move forward in worship. Bless every worshiper, every passerby who comes this way. We believe, we know it is done, and we know that you are real. Bless us now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.
Good morning to Pastor Mosette, Calvary members, and Calvary friends. I'm Sharon Bennett, and I'm here with your announcements for the week of January 10th. Celebrating birthdays this week, on the 11th, we have Mother Dorothy Jordan celebrating her 95th birthday. On the 14th, we have Sister Dolores Floyd. And also on the 14th, we have First Lady Edwina Mosette. Happy birthday. Again, we would like to remind you of our updated church meeting and worship celebration schedule. As we continue to pray through the COVID-19 pandemic, we are called to be faithful, not foolish. We are also called to love one another. All midweek meetings will continue to take place online. The same time schedule will be maintained as closely as possible. Bible study is held Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Instructions for logging on can be found on the church website. And remember the password for logging in the Bible study is Calvary in all caps. You may also join us on Facebook Live. You can get a head start by reading Galatians chapter four. Sunday morning Sunday school classes are held at 9 a.m. each Sunday via Zoom and Facebook Live. You may log on via the church website and next week's lesson is Healing for the Whole Person, taking from Mark 2, 1 through 12. And if you don't have a book, don't worry. A virtual copy of the lesson can be accessed on the church website. Please tell friends and family to join us. All are welcome to this hour of power. This is a great opportunity to discuss the word, ask questions, converse with others, and grow. Sunday morning worship is shared online at 10.30 a.m. via Zoom, Facebook Live, and YouTube. Remember the web ID and password to log into Zoom are the same every Sunday. When you get to Zoom, remember the password is Calvary in all caps. As we are aware of the new Safer at Home order in our state, we are taking extreme precautions for our members and guests, especially our most vulnerable. We are aware that the County of LA has lifted the order that banned indoor worship services. However, county officials still urge, especially in light of the most recent surge in COVID-19 cases, that only virtual or outdoor services are held. As the health and safety of our membership and visitors is our highest priority, our online broadcasts will continue until further notice. We're currently planning to hold our first outdoor service on January 24th and protocols will be shared. Don't worry if health concerns prevent you from attending. This service and all others will be broadcast online as we've been doing since March 2020. Our goal is to continue to make the loving gospel of Christ as accessible as possible. Your continued prayers are appreciated as we move forward safely. On Friday, January 15th, the Santa Monica Interfaith Council will host the MLK Freedom Celebration Prayer Breakfast at 8 a.m. If you would like to attend, the link to register is posted on the Calvary web website. An optional $15 donation is requested but not required. On Monday, January 18th, the 36th annual Dr. Martin Luther King celebration hosted by the Westside Coalition will be held virtually. The celebration will begin at 9 a.m. via the MLK Westside Coalition website at mlkjuniorwestside.org. The keynote address speaker will be the Honorable Karen Bass, member of Congress and chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Please visit the church website for details and web links. We are excited to continue our partnership with Garter Heart, no cost COVID-19 antibody testing. Nearly 600 people were tested right here at Calvary last month, and we have another opportunity scheduled for January 19th through the 21st. Both digital and hard copy flyers are available so that you can share this opportunity with your contacts. If you would like to volunteer to help with greeting and checking in guests, traffic control, setup, breakdown, doing temperature checks, preparing and or providing lunch to the volunteers, and so much more, please contact the church office. We expect an even larger turnout this month, so your support is truly appreciated. Let's remember to support our seniors by staying connected, especially to our seniors and those who may be unable to participate in our online services due to technical difficulties. If you are technically savvy, please reach out and help those who aren't. Also, please reach out simply to share a loving word of concern or an encouraging prayer. Remember, we are called to expressively and actively love one another. Never forget, we are one love, one faith, one family, one Calvary. Please be sure to visit our website as we continue to add resources which include resources for food, 
grants, economic support, employment information, and beyond. Please share information with friends and family as our goal is to be as supportive as possible in these challenging times. You are also able to safely share your tithes, offerings, pledges, and other donations via the website. Finally, you might ask yourself how you can help spread the word and grow the Calvary family in times like these. Well, one way to start is by liking our Facebook page and sharing the page, especially the Sunday morning broadcasts on your timeline and asking your friends and family to do the same. If you've been blessed by the worship experience, your friends and family might be as well. Let's use our social media as arms of loving embrace to do what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20. Those are the announcements. I'm Sharon Bennett. Be blessed, stay safe, and I'll see you next week. Come on, Spirit, help me. Spirit of the living God. Oh, come on and fall fresh. His goodness and all he's done for me. I, I...
And we give God praise for this, another moment in time. He continues to be gracious and loving. We thank him for all of the gifts, uh, talent and contribution that have been made to worship so far. And uh, we believe in the consistency of a loving God as he continues to bless us. <clears throat> Let me share a scripture uh, or a portion there of with you as we get ready to share for just a bit from the Word of God. I don't think that I am alone in the heaviness of my heart with regard to the status of our nation. And the reality is that a nation is made up of people. And so whatever the nation is that's determined by who the people are and what is in the heart of the people. I had not planned to preach what I'm preaching today, but I'm led by the Spirit of God to to share a word as directed and as led and guided by him. So I solicit your prayers as we just try to move forward. And with that, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. There's a piece of scripture in Second Chronicles chapter 7, beginning at verse 11. It's beautiful. It says this, when Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace, he and had succeeded in carrying out all he had in mind to do to the temple, of the Lord and in his own palace, the Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among the people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart 
will always be there. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> this passage for me as led by the Spirit of God presents a question as we tag this text for a subject. Where are my people? Where are my people? Text somebody, call them quickly on the phone, send them a messenger notice and let them know that pastor is speaking from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 11 through 16. The subject is a question that simply asks, where are my people? I, along with you, have been living in what we've been living in, living through what we have been living through. And I'm always concerned mainly about the heart of individuals because what I have come to realize is that policy and legislation are all driven by people. They all are driven by the hearts of individuals. And, and so when we look and we see what we see and we hear what we hear, we're not just hearing words that are coming out of the mouth. We're not just seeing actions that are based on arms and legs moving under their own volition that are behaving without thoughtful motivation. We are not just seeing reactionary behavior. We are seeing the essence of the heart of an individual. It goes for me, it goes for you. I don't care if it's in a large public setting or if it's in a small meeting or if it's in a one-on-one, -on -one, whatever is going on, whatever communication is being made, whether it's verbal or nonverbal, it is an outpouring of the heart. And so I look at this. I've heard this scripture so many times before. I've been careful about its application in current times. But it is interesting that it is a response to Solomon's prayer in chapter six. And as I apply it and look at what is going on with us, I ask, where are my people? And I ask that on behalf of the Lord himself. As a Christian individual, I look at the behavior, I, I, I hear the communication, and I, I think God has to be asking, where, where are my people? And if there's a question about where 
we are or where they are is an indication that in some way, somehow, we're lost. For many, many years, my wife and I, not unlike most parents, made sure that we took our children to Disneyland and it was always a, a wonderful family uh, event. I remember uh, one of the old pictures that uh, we cherish. We came across where the whole family, even my parents and uh, nieces and nephews, and I don't even think Hallie, our youngest, was born but we are all in a boat coming out of the small world ride and my father was even in the, in the boat and I, it may have been a time where he was still, one of the last times that he was able to walk or we um, were able to get him in to the boat, but we were all there and we did this many times and we've had parties there and events there and all of this. But in every situation that we went or for every event, you always came across maybe a child crying or a parent in panic because somebody was lost. And the driving set of questions uh, when someone was in distress because of them being lost or their people being lost were questions about identification. What were they wearing? Uh, where were they last seen? Uh, what were they doing? And, it, and most importantly, what is the name of the person that you're looking for? If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. It, it was about some kind of identification of the lost. The, the thing about it is this, as I ask this question, where are my people? See, when, when, the, when the child was lost and looking for their mom or their dad, there, there were plenty of moms there. There are probably a million moms in, in the park. There, there's plenty of dads there. But they're not looking for anybody. They're not looking uh, for a, 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 any mom or any dad. They are looking for the one that when they call dad, they perk up, they respond. If my people who are called by my name, if my people would humble themselves and pray, there's a whole lot of people, I wish I 
I had somebody here. There's a whole lot of people. It, it is what the point is that is, is being made. There's a whole lot of folks doing a whole lot of stuff. But I'm not just talking to anybody. I'm talking to my people. See, my people are identified, it seems to indicate, by my name or his name. My people. See, let me put it to you this way. I keep trying to make it plain. If we're talking about lost and found and you lose a jacket, and you go to the lost and found, I deal with this all the time, at the end of the school year, I've got bins on top of bins on top of bins full of kids' clothing and all kinds of items and hundreds and hundreds of sweaters and jackets and all of that. But see, you've got to describe your stuff. And so what is said here is that we are to be a people who are described in certain ways. Number one, we have claimed to be described and identified by his name. If my people, you see, a lot of what needs to be understood is that as God here is speaking about the children of Israel, many folks who were associated with them were blessed by their positive association with his people. Many people were hurt by their negative association with his people. But God wanted to make it clear that if my people, you see, this is what concerns me as I look at what's going on around us. I, I, I'm wondering if God is asking the question, where are my people? Where are my people in this? What are my people saying? Where are my people going? If my people who are called by my name. You see, not pointing the finger at what other people are doing. He's saying, I understand a whole lot of stuff is going on. I understand a whole lot of choices are being made. I understand a whole lot of foolishness is happening. I understand a whole lot of people are misguided. I understand a whole lot of people are confused. I understand there's a whole lot of people walking around with blinders on, making bad decisions, making bad, dis bad choices. But what he says is, if my people who are called by my name. I can remember situations uh, where uh, there was some issue. Uh, if I got in uh, a trouble and me and my cousins were arguing or fighting or whatever the case may be, when my father got involved, what he, when he said what happened, and I started explaining what somebody else did, he said, I'm not concerned, <laughs> wish I had a witness in the house, I'm not concerned so much about you telling me or about what somebody else did, I want to know about you, I want to know about my people, if my people who are called by my name, as I shared that in this 
scripture is often quoted. But we understand that if you read chapter six, you will see Solomon's prayer before the people as he dedicated the temple. And if you, 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 you drop down uh, maybe close to the end of that chapter and you start reading at verse 28, I want to just bring something forward to you and then I'll, I'll let you go. When, verse 28, chapter six says, when, when there is famine in the land and, and, and Solomon had kind of delineated a number of things that he presented in his prayer of dedication before the Lord. He said, when there's famine in the land, pestilence or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when the enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people, Israel, when each one knows his own burden and his own grief and spreads out his hands in the temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and give to everyone according to his ways, whose heart you know. For you alone know the hearts of the sons of men that they may fear you to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. He says, Lord, when we come to you, deal with our hearts. I wish I had a witness. You see, it is the heart of the people. It is the heart that lives in you. It is your heart that makes the difference with God. And let me enlighten you. It is your heart that makes the difference with everybody else around you, with your neighbors. We preached last week about the Good Samaritan and it was the heart inside him that drove him to compassion and drove him to mercy. God knows your heart. And when he asks, where are my people? We go back here and say, if my people, if my people, the ones who are called or even call themselves by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. It is the heart of the people. Before Solomon in chapter six, before he uh, got to that part of the prayer, he illuminated this fact in verse 22 that sticks with me where he says, if anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, bringing retribution on the wicked by bringing his way on his own head and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. In other words, he said, the ones who mistreat their neighbor, deal with them accordingly. The ones who please you as driven by their hearts, reward them accordingly. If my people who are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves and pray and seek my face, 
turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. I'm getting ready to close. I know you've heard this statement, this cliche statement that says life is short. And we know that is true from this context. Uh, if you look at Second uh, Peter three and eight, we go to this place where we understand that uh, time really is a, a construct by which we live, not not uh, a construct that God lives by, because it reminds us that a, a thousand years uh, can be a day in the eyes of God and one day can be a thousand years. Time is not something that he is bound by. That's some that's that's a construct that we live in. And so. When we're thinking in these grand terms, yeah, life life is comparatively short. But if you live long enough to be listening to me right here and now, you probably live long enough to make a few choices. And I heard something funny where um, a person said life is short and they said, no, it isn't. It's long. And and the key to it is that life is a summation of the choices that you make. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray that that's a choice and seek my face, turn from their wicked. Those are choices. And life is a summation of choices. Joshua addressed the people, did he not? And the reason I just bring that up which may seem to be out of the blue to you. It's not out of the blue to me. It's, it's about the reality of choices because we've heard it all the time. Life is a summation of your choices. Joshua 24 and 15 back up to 14. Joshua says to the people, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord 15. And if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day. Whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As we look and wonder, where are my people? My people have to be those who are making the right choice. Those are my people. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, then I'll forgive their sin, I'll heal their land. Life is summation of our choices. The gospel songwriter says some folks would rather have houses and land. Some folks choose silver and gold. These things they cherish and forget about their souls. But I've decided to make Jesus my choice. And then they say this, the road gets rough, the going gets tough, the hills are hard to climb. I started out a long time ago, but there is no doubt in my mind. I've 
decided to make Jesus my choice. Why? Because Jesus lived a life before me that was led by compassion, that was uh, uh, dripping with mercy, that, that separated mercy and judgment and didn't have them coexist, uh, that, 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 that took uh, the law and said it was fulfilled and prioritized people and said, uh, you've got to love one another just like I've loved you. And so my people are those who recognize that a loving Savior gave his life for them. My people are those who live today and live in a way that recognizes the compassion of a all-powerful, loving God who made the choice to move to Calvary's hill. My people are those who recognize that every time the hammer fell, he was choosing to allow himself to be sacrificed a ransom for many, my people. I wish I had a witness. My people, they recognize that they serve a risen Savior. Sometimes I'm puzzled. I'm confused and I wonder how can some people do the things that they do yet they're willing to call themselves save sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. How can you treat your neighbor so bad and in the same breath claim that you love the Lord? Where is your compassion? Where is your mercy? Where are my people who recognize that the Savior had enough compassion in him to look amongst the crowd at those who were crucifying him, at those who had denied him, and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I wish I had a witness here. Where are my people? Have they forgotten about the fact that he brought in a dying thief who was rightfully convicted? Where are my people? Have they forgotten about when he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. And so in this chaos, what we need to be doing is lifting up a savior who lives. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Oh, help me lift him up. Because the Bible says that as he hung on that cross, 
as he gave up the ghost as they took him down and buried him in a borrowed tomb the Bible says that the story did not end there but in three days he got up with all power in his hand all power in his hand power to change the very complexion of a nation power to change the individual heart of a person power to step on the head of evil power to lift you up when you're down power to put running in your feet clapping in your hands power to build you up where you are weak power to help you turn from every negative entity power to make you right when you'd rather be wrong if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray seek my faith turn from their wicked ways then I'll hear from heaven I'll forgive their sin I'll heal I'll heal I'll heal I'll heal their land hallelujah lift him up hallelujah and give him some praise hallelujah for all that is done hallelujah for all that is doing hallelujah that he saves he delivers and he sets free God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for being your people. Give us the strength that we need to live lives that please you, elevate you, and lift you up. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You might be listening, viewing, saved, know the Lord as your personal savior, you're active in your local fellowship, maybe virtually, maybe joining us and we thank God for you. Keep doing what you're doing, keep living a life that is pleasing in the eyes of our savior. You might say, Reverend, I'm not saved, I'm not sure or I'm saved, but I don't have a church home. I would love to be your pastor. I would love for you to partner with the Calvary family. I'd love for us to walk together and grow together. I'd love for us to put our arms in an interlocked fashion and we stand on the promises of God to do the things that are necessary to elevate his compassion in an applicable way, his mercy and his grace, I would love that. And if that's you, give me a call at the church. You see my number there, that's my direct line, 310-829-1001. You can call me directly. If I don't pick it up, leave a message, I'll call you back. I guarantee you I will. 
Let me pray with you. Let me pray for you. I serve the God who loves you. He loves me. Uh, he's not trying to kick your door down. He says, I stand at the door and knock. If you let me in, I'll come in, sup with you. You can learn of me and I'll teach you about yourself. Be blessed as you consider your membership. God, we thank you for every viewer, every believer, everyone who might have just come across the broadcast and be interested or curious about you. Give them peace, strength. Iron out the wrinkled places in their lives. Give them direction if they're confused. But above all, remind them that you love them and that we love them too. Bless us in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Will God be praised for you? Thank you so much for joining us today. The question is asked, where are my people? And it's time for God's people to stand up in a way that applies his mercy, his grace, and his beauty. As always, I ask if you would like to support this ministry, we certainly appreciate your gifts. You may do that safely through our website. The prompts will be following shortly. Or you may mail your gift in to the Calvary Baptist Church, 1502 20th Street, Santa Monica, California, 90404. Now please receive this benediction for it is now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne of grace to the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless your hearts. I'll see you next week.